We don't really have a plan for this session, um, and that's actually by design, um, because we uh, are here mostly to listen to you. Um, so, uh, as a board, we've been trying to get a, a better and closer relation with our working groups, and this is one of the occasions to do that. So, um, we asked for topics and for people, and we didn't really get an official response. So I'm hoping that we will uh, just wing it and see uh, if we can have an interesting discussion about what the board is doing right and wrong, about what the working groups are doing, how they could do better, how we could do better for them. Um, so that's uh, kind of the, uh, the point today. It's also like to show um, to each other uh, that we are humans and that we talk to each other uh, and not just online persona. Uh, that's what State of the Map is for. Um, and we thought like make it a little official uh, so that we can do it with, um, with more people and that everyone can be involved in this uh, conversation. <laughs> um, so, Yeah, so yeah. <laughs> when I explained the concept to, uh, to Mikkel, uh, it was basically like, yeah, the OpenStreetMap Foundation is here in its naked form. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Um, um, who here is on a, yeah. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to uh, maybe suggest an icebreaker for the board and um, working group members. If um, all of you could do a quick intro of your name, your OSM handle, and which group or groups you're in, um, just to kind of like paint the picture for those of us who are not um, involved in those groups. Because um, I think obviously we've seen um, your names and what you write, etc. Um, but just to kind of set the stage there, um, if that would be possible. Uh, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, is this thing working? Yeah. Yep. Awesome. Um, who's going to start? Hi, I'm Gregory. Um, I'm on the State of the Map Organizing Committee. Join us. I am Stefano, uh, Saba 788 uh, on uh, OpenStreetMap. I'm uh, in the local chapter uh, group uh, and in the advisory group. Hi, I'm Michelle, and I'm not in any of the local groups. <laughs> but I look after the finances. Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm Dennis. I'm currently a new recruit uh, data working group member. Hi, I'm Maggie. I'm a new part of the local chapter working group. I'm not on any group yet. I'm from Brazil and my name is Thierry. <laughs> you will be in a group soon. <laughs> I'm Michael and I'm a member of Sutton Working Group. I am Christina and I'm a member of the Sutton Working Group. Uh, I'm Manfred and I was on the program committee for the Sutton. I'm Tom, I'm in the data working group. It's okay, we'll have this one go this way. Uh, hi, I'm Rory, I'm on the communications working group. Hi, I'm Dorothea, and I'm also in the communication working group. I'm Rafael, and I am not in any working group. I'm Andy. I used to be part of the operations working group, but I'm not currently a member. I am David. Uh, I'm new. Uh, please adopt me. Thank you. Oh, David, you're going to have so many jobs. Oh, thanks. Hi, I'm Davy. I am not part of any working group. I'm Ferdy, and I'm not even part of the OpenStreetMaps Foundation. Yet. <laughs> Hello, uh, I'm Shinji. Uh, I'm not so joined the so. Uh, 
group, any group, yeah, from Japan. Um, I'm Kelsey. I'm not in any particular group, but I am an OSMF member. I'm Christoph Imagico, and I'm not in any working group. But that's not a working group. No. All right, I'm on the advisory board for Foskids. Hi, I'm Hannah, and I'm not in any working group yet right now. Hi, I'm Satoshi, so I'm a very in inactive uh, licensing working member. Sorry, members, especially Simon. <laughs> I'm uh, slightly busy to take care of daughters, but uh, I would like to uh, contribute as a uh, foundation group as well. Christian Kest, Sequest, I'm in the advisory board. I am uh, Frédéric Ram, and I'm uh, uh, currently a board member and also on the data working group. I'm Thomas Scovern, I'm not on any working group. But a, a lot of those saying they're not uh, in a working group are active in the in, in local chapters, right? Uh, I'm Dermot Pagnelli, I'm a former board member, and I, if I'm to be honest, I need to say a former li licensed working group uh, board member because I've been inactive for so long. Sorry, Simon. Hello, I'm Eugene, and I'm a member of the pla planned <laughs> local chapters working group, which we're hoping to revive. Thank you. I'm Heather. I'm a board member. I have my thing. So I'm, I'm Joost, I'm a board member as well. I'm Paul, I'm Paul, I'm a board member and I'm on the membership working group and operations working group and used to be on the data working group, license working group and engineering working group. <laughs> <laughs> Did I miss any? <laughs> Hi, I'm Mikael, I'm on the board and on the state of the map working group. Hi, I'm Kathleen. I'm on the licensing working group. Hi, I'm Simon. Handle Simon Poole, so that's simple. I'm on the awesome license working group, which seems to attract more people than, than you would expect. Huh? <laughs> well, yeah, show up to meetings. Yes, I do show up to meetings. Um, I've been on a local chapters working group and I'm a former board member and I'm a member of the Swiss local chapter as well. I think that covers nearly everything. Hi, I'm Michael uh, Daten Delphine and I'm on the membership working group. Hi, I'm, Seba uh, hi, I'm Sebastian. I'm not in a working group, uh, but I'm an OpenStreetMap Found uh, F member now, so I started <laughs> to work in a group soon. You have any other ideas? <laughs> <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry, you want a bar graph of how many members there are in each working group? Sorry. Yeah, no. No, because that's there's a thing, right? Like we have what under thirty people in the room and this is huge organization. Yeah. And do working group members feel overworked? <laughs> yeah, sorry, who do we miss? Um, just to complete the introductions, I'm Tobias Knapp. Uh, um, I'm a board member and I'm on the engineering working group and the communications working group. Awesome. Sorry, Tobias. Uh, and I'm Hrvoje. I'm uh, currently on communications working group. And maybe more. We'll see. Thank you. How did we do that? Uh, ju just a note, you do not have to be an OSMF member to join a working group. So if anyone's in here who's not yet an OSMF member, please become an OSMF member. But that's not an excuse not to help out in a working group. <laughs> you 
know, we've had um, a lot of discussions about working groups, and I think that you guys each are part of them. What do you need from the board? That would be my question. And what do you need from the community? I like that one. We have, yeah, we have more microphones. Ah, you have two. Okay. Okay. Um, I would say one of the things about the working groups is I think that they lack visibility. So as a person new to a working group, I didn't know how to join and didn't know what the process was. And I know they're on the wiki or whatever, but as a new person, it could be very difficult to figure out how to get involved if you want to. So some more marketing or visibility are we missing working groups engineering operations oh. other comments about the working groups um so last, I know maybe we've been quiet because I'm sure there's lots of things all our working groups could um, have more help with. You know, if you get in touch, we can normally help find you a job. Um, but last year uh, at State of the Map in Milan, um, we had a session um, where people came and they could come and meet people from each of the working groups. And I kind of tried to send people off. Um, and I just wondered, did anyone, um, maybe some of you are here and you said you're working group because you joined last year um, and you started helping then, or maybe did anyone see any members come and it's because um, they met you at the conference last time or they met someone? Have we had anything from that? Or do you think we could do anything better at State of the Map to make us more visible, make the working groups more visible? Uh, for me, well, my first thought was like, is there a map of how, how to see um, where are these um, working group members are based? Like, where can I um, talk to him per person? Because for me, it's kind of important to talk to him in person and not via chat or message sometimes. So I don't know where they are like, like, uh, do they meet in an open street map? Um, meeting or just these conferences, I, I don't know. So um, for me, it would be like important to know at which conference they are going and because they are, have different uh, scientific fields or I don't know, uh, like I, I'm going, for example, to the International Cartographic Conference. It was in Tokyo this year. It's, there's also OpenStreetMap track about it. So I get to in touch with uh, the scientific field and I, I meet also people there from OpenStreetMap. Sometimes I meet here people from the, this kind of conference so I can talk and I'm sure this is not so much about OpenStreetMap but um, yeah, for me it would be an interesting to have like a list or to, to, to view at which spots in the world uh, you are active, like, like basically active. To answer your question, uh, I think I saw increase in uh, communications working group members because we have a few new translators that translate the official blog and stuff like that. I think the Dorothea maybe has more information about that, but I think the, I saw a few new people on the answering the mails and stuff like that. So that's the only. Uh, Sorry, that's the only group I know that has grown in members since last year. Maybe there are other groups, so please say if there are new members in other groups. Is that right, Dorothea? There are new members in communications? Yeah. Um, I can say from a uh, licensed working group point of view, there were no new members. I didn't really expect it. Um, I, I, I think personally that, that our, our community sees the topics as a bit as difficult and they fear they don't have the specialist knowledge required 
even though I would say we don't, perhaps we don't have a, um, enough lawyers on the LWG, but we do have lawyers on the LWG. Um, what we're missing a bit is um, legal experts from the EU, or at least people with, with profound legal knowledge in, in the EU. Um, and, uh, but, you know, community members bring in a different point of view as well, and are just as welcome. Yeah. To use the mic. Um, we, we don't have a global diversity at the moment. We have members from the EU and you have, we have members from the US. Um, but, you know, the rest of the world is not represented, um, you know, whether they're lawyers or not. The other more general thing that I have to say, I, I always feel that one of the reasons we have difficulties in general attracting people to the working groups is that OSM is a volunteer organization, so people are already contributing their time for something which they find interesting, and asking them to participate in a working group means, okay, you have to, on top of that, or instead of that, spend more time doing stuff which they perhaps don't quite find so enjoyable. And so we're not, you know, it's, I don't know, it's not an association of medical doctors where everybody is working professionally in, in their, their field and then they volunteer a bit of time for their, their association or something like that. It's actually, we're, 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 adding, we're asking for more volunteer time and I think that is perhaps a bit the difficult point. Yeah. Following up on what Simon said, um, one of the main motivations for people to volunteer in a volunteer environment is that they can accomplish something. I mean, every one of us who has started volunteering for OSM did so because, in effect, they could accomplish something. So maybe one thing that would be helpful is if people who are on the working groups could give examples on how in the working group work they could accomplish something in their time there. I think that might be something that could give a concrete motivation to people to participate. Um, I, I, I thought about, because I, I'm, I'm studying now geoinformatics now next to my working time and I have a marketing lesson now, and they, they told me something about, yeah, you, have, you need a, like a strategy first to have structure and then have a culture at the end. And to have like an open, open street map culture at the end, you, you need a structure. So to have structure, you need a strategy. So I, for me, it's like I need like a plan. What's the, the really strategy of, of open street map or uh, the community work on, so you have to start with this, in my, in my opinion, uh, to know what's, what's, um, yeah, what's, what are the points, what's, what's important first, and to start with that, to take, make a sprint like these hackathons to use this time to, to solve this problem and then continue with the next one and so on. But for me it's like there are several uh, Problems, but I don't really see it as a as a editor. I, I I am because I'm mapping all the time, but I'm, it's not useful to map. Like like uh, I met um, Satoshi this year in in Japan first, and he told me he's he's doing so much maps at the beginning, but now he needs like help in, in doing tools. Or and I want to do the same. I don't want to map anymore because uh, I did so much edits. It's more important to solve the problems. Uh, I don't know. It's my thought about this because, yeah. So I'm quite new to OSM, and one thing that I would maybe find quite interesting is if you would get, like, maybe in weekly OSM, sometimes progress reports about what the working groups are doing, because you only rarely see really examples of what is happening. It's more like it's in the background, but you don't really see what is being done. And we don't know what they need either, right? Yeah. Go ahead. 
I'm Michael from Weekly OSM team. Um, we link to minutes of working group meetings if they are published at osmfoundation.org. So it might be a communication issue. Yeah, I, I was going to say maybe we need to more prominently link the minutes um, because they do exist. Um, I, I have a suggestion for um, the state of the map working group for next year, which is maybe to have um, like stickers or something that say like ask me about the communications working group or the ask me about the um, you know li licensing working group and then we could like the members of the working groups could put them on our name badges as like to identify ourselves to people as members of the working group so when they see us around the conference they can ask us about those working groups. We could, we could. Just wanted to say about the thing with the minutes being linked in the weekly OSM that I have also sometimes looked at it, but it's honestly quite a dry format. <laughs> <laughs> so, are, are you reaching new people? That's a really good comment. Go ahead. Um, I just wanted to comment on, on the issue of strategy and so on. I, uh, the board members know that I keep on going on about this, so bear with me. Um, I, I think a lack of a visible new strategy or a reaffirmation of, of what the strategy of the OSMF is is something which is a bit missing because we don't really have this guiding document. The, the, the last time there was a statement like that goes back to um, Mikhail, that face-to-face -face meeting which I think you had in 2011 or, so, or something before my time. We talked time. about it face-to-face. I mean, it's, it's a real long time ago and, and things have massively changed. That was even prior to the license change being completed, I think. Yeah, and, and it, it just, I, I see it all over the place with the operations working group, with, with other working groups that, you know, this, this clear, perhaps not clear, but some direction where we're going is missing. Just, just to pick up on that one, Simon, because I was actually at that session in, in Seattle, um, and one of the things that's probably worth calling out, because it was a factor then, and, you know, board, board, let board structures change, but I think, you know, there's often a degree to which the fact that there can be often differences of opinion within the community about certain directions versus certain other ones, and sometimes that makes it difficult to have a conversation like that. I still agree that it's necessary to break through and, and have it anyway, but I think that's one of the things that probably inhibits us from doing it as much as we should as a community and as a foundation or a board or at whatever level that conversation takes place. I'm just going to go back to more general points, uh, starting with something more specific. In the operations working group, I found it hard to get through the year without getting um, monthly budget expenditure reports, because we have a huge budget. And by the time it gets to about August or September, you're not really sure how much money we've spent, how much money's still in the budget, um, and getting all the working groups to duplicate the job of the treasurer is, is a lot of work. Um, so, in my experience, it would be great for the working groups to have their budgets, how much they've spent, how much is left in the budget coming out during each year instead of it being an annual exercise. But there's also, the second point kind of widens that slightly. Um, there's a lot of lack of clarity as to how much decision-making powers the working groups have and at what point things need to go from the working groups to the board. So if we just talk about budgets, when we put in a budget for £4,000 of consulting on this topic and it, and it gets approved, it's then not clear whether or not the working group can do consulting for something else without having to go back to the boards to get it reapproved. If we decide that we don't want a Postgres replication database consultant, but we want something else consulting, do we have the authority to make that decision? And in, in most aspects of things like writing official OSMF policies, 
do they need to be approved by the board or does a working group, can we just make changes, can we make a new policy or does that need to go to the board? There's a big lack of um, clarity on, on those issues. Um, and even, this is going back in time now, but I pushed at a previous version of this meeting for the responsibilities of each of the working groups to be written down for the first time because up until I'm not even sure when it was, maybe 2011 or 2012, sometime around then, the working groups just had a title and then everybody knew what each of the working groups was in charge of. But it was a useful exercise to go through and say, the operations working group is responsible for this, this and this, and is not responsible for that, that and that. And those decisions haven't been revisited or reviewed since then. The, what's written on the wiki is pretty much what we wrote that day at the board meeting in London. And then, unrelated to those two points, I would say the best thing that the board can do is to be relentlessly monitoring the membership of the working groups, both for how many people are in each working group and for how long each person has been in that working group. Because there are definitely stale working groups where it's great that somebody wants to be in that working group for the 10th year in a row, but if we, it, it doesn't matter if there's three people or four people if it's four people who have only been there for a year or there has been no new people in that working group for a decade, those are different signs of health in the working groups. And the working groups themselves are not very good at reflecting on their own membership and are often in a situation where they're not the best people to recruit or to analyze or to, to, to break out of a situation if they find themselves stuck in that situation. So I think it's a key responsibility for the board to not assume that things are okay and to not assume that the guys who have been there for, for years, guys and ladies who have been there for years will continue to be there, but to be much more proactive in looking after the membership of the, the working groups. So I'm sorry that was, that was a bit long, but I, I feel like um, but now that I've stepped away from being in the working groups, it's, it's easier for me to reflect on, on some of these things. Now it's working. So, so you want me to talk about the membership? Yes. Did a bunch of changes this year, so. Yes um, so one big topic was the fee waiver, which was kicked off uh, shortly before the elections. Um, that was uh, for us a, a huge amount of work, um, and we um, well, we, we how should I put it? We were in the process of, of defining uh, some workflow um, and we, we just were stuck with uh, the details and nobody wanted to pick this, uh, these details up, like the, um, what specifically uh, does a member need to do to contribute something of value. Uh, and there, well, I, we, we were in I don't know if he uh, communicated with the board uh, very well where we were stuck, but um, that was kind of uh, difficult. And then uh, we had the elections. And you want me to talk about uh, this uh, global logic incident as well? Just, yeah, just, you did something big, right? Yeah, yeah. so um, the, right before the election, there was also this uh, huge sign up. We, I just had a talk uh, about it. and. Um, Behind the scenes, there there was some friction uh, between the membership working group and and the board because it was uh, yeah we we were in investigating and uh, the board says oh, well no 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 everything is okay uh, don't do anything and um, was kind of an, an issue of of uh, independence we just went ahead um, and it was of, was of course a, a lot of work that we had to do. Uh, to get this uh, to get this right, and um, we are pretty slow uh, a lot of the time, and uh, then this one time we were faster, and we were kind of really frustrated with then the board being slower than we were. Um, so yeah. 
I'm just going to add one sentence to that. You guys had a problem. There was a risky thing that happened. You resolved it, and then you documented. And so Andy was talking about why we need to document in advance. Sorry. That's great. Um, I have a question followed by a suggestion based on the answer to the question. Um, do the different working groups, how often do the different working groups talk to each other or the board? To other Is that a, am my assumption correct that this doesn't happen very often? <laughs> the first <laughs> annual meeting. Second backup follow-up to that would be is if there's a chairman on each of these working groups to represent the working group, should there be a conversation with the other working groups or the board? So my suggestion is that maybe there's a chairperson that stands up for each of the working groups and maybe there's a all hands kind of conversation every couple of months with the board members and the membership working or the working group leads. I think they sometimes talk to each other anyway. The same people, right? Um, but, well, on the one hand, naturally the community is small. So there's, there's informal talks naturally the whole time. But uh, you actually uh, touching on something which is quite important, which I sometimes feel is missing a bit that you know stuff happens in the working group where other working groups might have should have been perhaps involved earlier um, and uh, there's no formal communication channels for that uh, so you know Sometimes things just get forgotten. There's not a, a monthly meeting of the of the working group um, chair people. But I have to point out that we have actually tried that. Um, there was the infamous uh, management team, which essentially was a body with some board members and the chair people uh, from the uh, chairpersons from the working groups, and. Uh, it, it didn't really work. It, it was an attempt. Um, but it didn't work. <laughs> and, and I was going to point out that, that it was a bit of a step for, in my eyes, I wasn't actively involved at that time, um, that the board tried to have a more strategic role and the, the executive um, part of the board was moved to this management team. and. Uh, it just in the end didn't work. I don't think we have enough manpower to go around for that kind of division of labor. Just, just briefly on the management um, team. I, I was on the management team from the start until the end. Um, to, I would say the main reason it never worked was because back then, the as now, the division of responsibilities was unclear. And the division of responsibilities between the board and the management team was as clear as mud. So that there, was, there was absolutely nothing to go on. So in the management team, we had absolutely no idea what we had the authority to make a decision on. And so we just talked about stuff. Um, it could be possible to do this, do something like that again, to have the heads of the working or chair people of working groups meeting together, but it would need to have a clear purpose and clear responsibilities. Otherwise, you, you just have meetings for the fun of it and nothing gets done. And documenting roles and responsibilities. You said it three times. I'm going to say it the fourth. Now it's, it's important. Who's next? Mikhail's over there with the mic too. Somebody else has to ask questions or make comments. Simon, I always appreciate, I appreciate you speaking up. I'm totally going to hand you the mic. I'm just noting. I just wanted to throw another hand into the discussion. Um, commenting quickly on what Andy said before, um, with respect to decision powers of the working groups and so on. Um, my understanding, and I'm saying this as the chairperson of the licensed working group, is that we develop the policies but to put them in force, we do need the board to vote on them after we've established some kind of community consensus. Um, but that is something which I've only really seen in that form from the licensed working group. And I'm talking about over a period of 10 years or so. Um, and um, I was 
discussing this yesterday with Andy, a classical example is we know our tile servers are stressed. Um, there's always this discussion, should they block more people using the service, should the access be restricted and so on. And, uh, I, and you know, there are some people in the working group, in the operation working group, who says yes, and others say no, and there's not really a community uh, consensus on what that should happen. So, but we don't actually know why we are providing tiles in the first place and what the intended audience is. And that's why these discussions just never lead anywhere. <laughs> and yeah, but they are the hardest possible discussions because we, there's, not close enough? Maybe, no, no, okay, I'll take this one. Um, there goes my train of thought. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so we, we, we have very uh, clear opinions about that. It's just that they are very different. So how do you make a policy when you completely disagree about where you want to go to? I think for tiles, maybe there is a solution. Um, but still, uh, there is a, a wide continuum. Is there somebody over there? So we have four board members leaving. We have a bunch of working groups with different terms of references and roles and responsibilities not documented. And then we have maybe some need to have more people in working groups. That's the summary I got so far. Go ahead, Chris. Um, if we pick out on that topic for a moment, that is somewhat apart from the working groups, because it's more about the decisions of the board. Um, what I'm often missing from the board is as an outsider from, from the OSF mostly, um, the admission of being unable to come to a decision. Uh, th that's my perception from the outside, of course. I don't know if you perceive this from the inside as well, but I think that might be something where you can improve on because if there's need for a decision and you can't make one, it doesn't necessarily mean there can't be a decision because the OSMF is that in the end an organization of its members and if the board can't make a decision, the members might be able to. So um, that as a suggestion to the board on that topic, that that might be a, some point where you could work on. You have the board that represents the community that you vote for and we are as different and we work really hard to negotiate, but I think figuring out how to negotiate as a board is a responsibility. Figuring out how to negotiate as a working group is a responsibility, and I think you're right, Christoph. It's really hard to find that middle ground. And that's, that's something as you're thinking through, what, who are the next people? How are you gonna have that middle ground that represents this beautiful thing that's so huge? I'm, I was gonna jump back to um, quite an early comment. Um, about people wanting to be involved um, or how you do that. I really like that someone in this area said, um, might have been Hannah, that, um, said we're used to, um, we, we get involved in OpenStreetMap and volunteer because we can see we do something and you see what you've done and the effect of that. Um, so I think we can be really positive and just share small things there. So it got me thinking, although I was being distracted. Um, I'm. As I said, I'm on the state of the map um, working group. So obviously we're all here in this room. So obviously I did something, um, but there, or, or the working group did something, but there's small things in that. So I picked out just thinking for five minutes, I was like, well, there was the time when our tickets sold out um, a few weeks ago. And as a group, we were able to discuss um, and go and talk and we were able to go, right, well, the insurance would need to change if we need more people. And what are the building regulations? And actually, we released 50 tickets, which they went so fast, you might not have noticed there were 50 more tickets um, after we sold out. But to me, that's a big, it's a big, small win. Um, and then another one that, I mean, that wasn't just me, that was the discussions and us as a team. Another one was um, today realizing that we hadn't done the, um, 
the slides to put in the breaks and I didn't have all the content from the sponsors. So today you may have seen me run up and down these stairs a few times and find sponsors. And you probably won't notice because they're not even on now. But tomorrow, take a look at the slides because that's a personal one, you know. It was something that maybe not, might not have happened, maybe it wasn't important, um, but it was something I could personally contribute um, in my time. So if anyone wants to do that next year, join. <laughs> Working? Yeah. yeah. Just want to say something about the decision making. Uh, Christoph, Christoph was saying, I mean, is it not uh, is it working to like let the community have a vote and have the working group members have a vote and the board to find a decision because you need to cut uh, to have a decision to close it to go on, <laughs> kind of. I don't know. I said this in Michael, uh, Michael's membership meeting, membership working group presentation. If you want this to change, the membership working group is the place to do it. If you want different kinds of members, right? There's an opportunity there in terms of voting and stuff. That's not our structure yet. Uh, I have almost the same comment. If uh, a decision is needed and the board cannot come to a decision, but also recognizes that a decision is needed, can it uh, call on the community to vote on it and maybe provide some options what can be voted for and then uh, make the decision that way? Thanks. Who's next? Mikhail's got a mic as well. Hello. I, I want to spin it around and ask what do the board, especially the departing board members, wish they'd had from the working groups? I've already talked. I'll wait. Frederick? <laughs> so, um, as the treasurer, I uh, usually send around an email to all working groups towards the end of a year asking how much money they want to spend in the next year. And I hardly ever get a response, expect, except from often I get a response from the operations working group and mostly I get a response from the legal working group because those two groups spend the most of money. Um, so they are interested in, in having that secured. Other than that, most working groups do not respond. Um, that's because most of the working groups don't spend any money. And the board would actually like them to. Um, just start slow, just say, you know, well, what, what could, if, if, we, if we had like a thousand or two thousand euros this year, what, what useful, what use could we make of that money for our working group? And be that only, printing something that gets distributed or uh, paying someone a little money for a task that no one else want to do, wants to do or so. Uh, our hope was years ago when we started doing this, um, our hope was that we would somehow uh, set in motion a, a process of learning in the working group because spending money is also something that you have to learn. You have to think about what you want and how much it costs and how to get it and so on. And most of the working groups just don't want to spend any money because they say we are just volunteers and uh, we're doing this as a volunteer job, doesn't cost any money. But that also ties their hands occasionally and they there, there, there might be small things that could actually help them and they don't even think of asking for money for that. So, yeah, that hasn't, hasn't really worked and I must admit I haven't put in more work than just asking people every year if they want to uh, put in a budget for next year. Um, another thing, of course, and uh, I mean, Andy has already said that he would expect the board to keep track of who the members are in a working group. Um, I always thought that as long as no one says something, it's probably going to be fine. Uh, turns out that this is not necessarily the case. It would of course be super great if working groups came to the board when they reach a point where they are not really functional anymore. But 
the danger is that at that point they are so dysfunctional that they cannot even reach out to the board. So Andy's probably right in saying that the board should take a slightly more active role. On the other hand, a well-working working group would probably be perhaps slightly unhappy about the board coming to them every regularly and saying, hey, how are your members? How, how do you have regular meetings? Please check. Which of these boxes can you check? Uh, give, us, uh, give us a life sign. I don't know. Yeah, those, those two things. Uh, tell, us what, tell us how much money you want to spend and tell us what you need if you need any help. Those would be great. Kate's not here, so I'll go next. Um, so we, you know, I've only been on your board for two years. And before that I was on the Humanitarian Nova Stream App Board. And it strikes me that um, this is a beautiful project, but our governance n needs a real think in terms of what do you want from your board? What do working groups do? But my bigger question is, if there's no strategy behind both of those and no plan, is that okay? If that's how you want it, that's fine. But what's the ramifications of that, right? You have working groups maybe have not had a lot of new people come in. There's a lot of things that you could do, a lot of clear asks that we could do that might be possible. But because there's this split between what does the board do, what do working groups do, um, you know, we maybe have an opportunity to ask ourselves some pretty hard questions about what do we really want to do now that we've been around this long. And so I'm not asking you to tear out the spinal cord of OpenStreetMap Foundation, but maybe it's time to be introspective on some of what we're doing and go forward. So I'm not going to be on the board next year to help do that if you guys decide you want to do that or if the membership decides to do that. But that's my one reflection. And it's always been an honor. Even the hardest things on being on this board has always been an honor because we all kind of believe in this community. Thank you both. Those are nice responses. I, I would say, OK, say we want to do that. What if we want to help build a structure? What do we even do to, to communicate that to all of you? <laughs> we can say it right now. But I, I don't feel like, how do you get a collective voice within the community to, to speak up and say, to take that temperature to see where everybody wants to go? I'll answer the question, which is about what board members feel they could, they could do or working groups could do. It's really simple for me. If things get confusing or complicated somewhere between the board and the working groups, I would like more opportunity to break out of the structures of how we communicate or how we process and just talk to each other and sort it out because it usually can get to the get to the point of things and resolve um, much quicker that way. Um, I don't quite know how to create that space, but I think it's something I would like to see more of. I don't think it needs to be a complicated governance structure. It's a cultural practice. If we're confused when we're communicating online, let's fi figure out a time we can talk to each other and um, see if that helps. I just quickly wanted to touch on something that Frederick uh, mentioned and Andy mentioned. Um, the working groups in general do have a remit document. Um, and I have to say in the case of the licensed working group, we probably haven't looked at it for two, three years, but things haven't really changed. Um, and I would definitely have no problem with um, board asking once per year, yeah, how many members do you have? Is everything still working? Um, I think there's a certain aversion against generating a lot of paperwork, but a couple of questions, no problem. That reminds me of the working group survey we sent out. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I should have sent some reminders about that because when, when we're talking about the, the health of the working groups, I think you guys are, are doing well, uh, but uh, we had two and a half responses when we finally reached out to the working groups with a really open-ended series of questions, like basically asking how are you doing, how have we messed up your life, how can we mess it up a bit, a bit less. Um, and. Yeah, if you don't get anything back, it's really 
hard to know what that means. It might mean they're overstressed. They, it might mean they have completely lost faith in you. It might mean they are doing well and they don't know why you're even asking. So it's really hard to, to work with that. Um, and it's, uh, it's really nice to, to see so many of you here. Um, but yeah, I, yeah, we can do better, I think. About reporting, I've, I've been involved in sport federations and uh, uh, every year we had the General Assembly and for the General Assembly, uh, each uh, working group, we had commissions, it's more or less the same, uh, was preparing a report for, not for the board, but for the General Assembly, for uh, the members. Um, I, I, I miss a little bit the General Assembly. Uh, the online uh, process is, uh, is, is uh, completely different compared to what we had. It was a place to discuss uh, a little bit more than what we have uh, right now, which is just f closed votes on a few things. Uh, I think in terms of, not democracy, but uh, in terms of exchange and y human relation, it's uh, something that uh, uh, we created something completely virtual. Uh, we, I, I really miss uh, something at that point. I don't know if I'm the, on, the only one, but okay. Um, the Sutton Working Group is um, didn't answer. Uh, directly, it takes some time <laughs> because we don't have any issues with the board and so we don't no need to complain. We are very happy about the work of uh, Dorothea and thank you so much for Dorothea's work <laughs> for us and uh, we, it's necessary always to have a good communication with the treasurer for asking maybe budget questions for the SOTUM when we don't know how many budget we will have because sponsors are not so quick. And that's all from my perspective. You guys can ask Dorothea if you need help, right? That's the point too with, with the negotiation because if you need help on things, that's a good early warning that maybe we need to find other things. And so Dorothy is always available too, and we can talk about that. Um, so I'm aware some, a lot of you maybe don't know all the hist everything that's behind some of these comments. Um, but I think there's also, maybe some of them are explained by fear. I think sometimes we can get feared to we don't want to make decisions. Obviously, it depends on the decision because we might make the wrong one. We don't want to respond to a survey because I don't represent everyone in my working group. You know, we don't want to tell you how we would spend some money because what if we spend it wrong or don't get good value out of it? So it's, it's not that we don't want to do things. I think we've started to get a culture or we built a culture about um, kind of fear um, let's just, uh, I'll just, I'll, I'll run things, I'll do this, but let's not do it too much. Um, and if, if you're new, if you're interested in joining, it, it may take a while to get to know people. Um, but yeah, it, go ahead and know them if you want to do something. Maybe don't run in there saying, I want to change your working group, I want to do all this, I want to sort out your problem. Because people will have fear that you might do things wrong again or you know or not again but you know you might upset people or people might question what you do um, but do approach them and say oh what can I do can you help me um, you know and things like that and and it takes time and talking to people okay um, yeah thank you uh, I have other uh, a question about um, for example um, for, for this uh, state of the map conference um, it, for me, it feels like there are really nice talks about really new things and uh, it's really changing kind of which topics are increased to this conference. But for me, it's like I want um, to come back to like, like what's important for, for the community and to, to need like more space to discuss also, not only have 
uh, to listen uh, to just uh, like to, to show what the, what the for example the working group are do, is doing and which kind of job offers for example kind of volunteering job offers they have to show what you what you can do in the working group but you have to show it and I thought like this conference is the same is, is it uh, is a, the right place to show um, what what you are doing in your volunteering time and uh, which kind of people you need, which skills do you need, and um, just show also on, on in a small group, like like show what you are doing, and um, um, to 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 invite also the community members or also new new editors to join, kind of. But I think it's also important to show what you are doing, and um, because many people don't know really what the working groups are doing because they only read and see what they can use, but they then don't really see it. I don't know. Um, yeah, just for a moment. I just wanted to pick up on the um, working group survey that you sent around. Um, it's just one very small change to it, but I would suggest surveying the members as individual respondents rather than asking the working groups for a response. Because although I'm not on the operations working group anymore, when I saw that coming in, I thought if the, somebody in the working group now needs to coordinate surveying all the members before the, you produce an official response. So it would just be one small tweak, and I think you'd get more responses to it if you were just asking the individual members what they thought of the working group, what they thought of the board, rather than trying to get each working group to make a collective answer. Okay. Okay. So, oh, so I would like to so. Uh, if possible, so so feedback is uh, very important, I think. But uh, I do not uh, remember the uh, official survey after the SOTM to participants. And so, uh, for example, uh, what is the feeling and what is uh, uh, your contribution to OpenStreetMap and OpenStreetMap Foundation? So, so we have a booth on the. Uh, around there, but uh, uh, someone uh, may uh, very hesitate to talk uh, what we what he can do directly. But uh, uh, surveying, yes, surveying is very difficult, but uh, one possibility to uh, take a feedback officially, I guess. you had about the survey. Um, so uh, I didn't uh, write anything because I didn't really know what to say um, based on the way that the question was phrased. Um, I, I think there are like a couple of objective things that you probably want to know about the working groups that you probably don't even need to ask the working groups because Dorothea takes the minutes so she knows how many members there are and how often the working group meets um, and how many people show up shows up to meetings so she can like probably compile those statistics and warn you if the working group is not meeting <laughs> um, before you know anybody in the working group warn, warns you. Um, but I think what would be useful in terms of communication between the working groups and the board is for the board to tell the working group if their board is expecting any work product from the working group that it has not received, and also for the board for you know for, for, like you know maybe like the board and the working group will say, what does the board owe the working group in terms of specific projects, in terms of like the board like still needs to give the working group feedback on X. And like it, it's something that the board is still meeting on and they just haven't made a decision. Um, or if the board is expecting something from the working group. I, I just hear like process problems all the time <laughs> and that's also it's my biggest personal frustration with being on the board that it's so hard to know what you're allowed to do and not and if it's it's okay to just send this mail out or you have to ask first or 
So uh, that's really, I think, a, a huge priority. It's also an extremely boring task, so I hope there's a lot of candidates who want to work on that when they apply. Um, so I have a question about the recent survey. It sounds like I don't know a lot of the history. I don't know what decisions are being held up and what everyone's disagreeing on in particular on the board, but uh, what decisions are going to be informed by the recent survey results on the board? The, uh, the survey on community in advance of Sodom. I mean, I think our thinking was that it would actually be useful input for this event and for discussions here. Um, rather than something very specific for the board. I don't know, Joost, if you have other thoughts, but I, I, we thought this was more useful for um, discussion within the community, especially here, rather than some particular action that we need input on. It, and outside of our own curiosity about the answers to those questions, we thought that there would be a lot of interest as well from other folks. Uh, yeah. Yeah, um, I, I guess it's not straight to a decision. It's more like uh, we have a sense that a lot of what we think and the context within which we make our decisions are based too much on how we think things work and not really, I mean, and that is based on what you read, the channels that you follow, the people you talk to. Uh, so, uh, yeah, you know what uh, happens with a country when everyone does that. So we wanted to like try to be a little more fact-based. Um, and if you have like uh, the voices of people from a lot of different backgrounds, which are, well, they're not random, of course, but uh, I, I think we had a really nice uh, selection of people from around the world with that. So it, it, it makes you like reconsider uh, assumptions. Like for, for me, for example, the biggest takeaway was that everyone uses mailing lists. It's like, it's, it's, I thought it was a European thing, but it's all over the place. Uh, and then you have the Telegram people and the, the Facebook people and, and they're, I mean, that kind of thing. It's, it's, it's just like interesting to know what the context is and, and um, like, if, if you think that this one place is the only place where you should listen, then you're probably missing out on too much. So then it, it informs you in a wider sense. It's not, yeah, so, yeah. Everybody else. Um, I, I just wanted to, to quickly touch back on the, the questionnaire which you sent around and I, I take the blame for not answering, but the, uh, uh, my response was a bit, oh, and uh, I mean, if it had been stuff that it, I had simply been able to tick off, it would have been okay, but you know, you have to build consensus around what are you going to answer and so on. But outside of that, I, I do want to, to say, and I think I can say that on behalf of the LWG, um, that uh, when, it's, when we've put concrete topics or, or subjects to the board for decision, um, I think we're quite happy with the time frames that that happened in and that decisions were made. Um, where it gets a bit dicey is, is you know, when we say, okay, this is a subject that should be looked at. In famous one, Brexit. Um, where we, we can't make the decision, we're just raising the point and then the feedback seems to be very, very little. And so, you know, we don't get uh, something back that says, okay, we're, we're on this and we're handling this. And that always leaves this feeling, well, yes, did it register or didn't it register? And, and that's, but, you know, outside of that, I think we're, we're quite, quite happy. And we have a lot of leeway um, I have to say, so we're not, we don't feel restricted or anything like that. Thanks. We're past time, but I'm happy to stay. Just out of curiosity and to get the big picture, how does communication currently happen within the working groups 
within the board and between the working groups and the board? Is that face to face by email, snail mail, other online ways? So Sarah gave a great presentation. Hannah, sorry, gave a great presentation. Sorry, I'm tired. I apologize, Hannah. About who we are and how we communicate. We are exactly a reflection of the network and how we communicate and how we don't communicate. That would be, and that's not necessarily a good answer, but it is a reflection that the complexities are there. And regarding what do you want from your board about decisions, it seems to me that um, when I joined the board, I thought I would work on strategy and decisions. And what I, what I learned was um, the definition of what a board member is in OpenStreetMap Foundation is different for each person. The definition of responsibilities is different for each person. And I felt like I couldn't move forward without understanding what the working groups wanted. And so that we just kind of ended up in a situation where I was confused and they were confused. I can yeah. go ahead, Michael. To answer Raphael's question, how working groups communicate, I can answer this for the certain working group. We use a couple of communication channels. Um, we have an internal mailing list, but this is usually used for communication with external people. Um, we have a private GitHub repository with issues and lots of discussions. Um, in, the in the last days before the event, we usually use uh, real-time communication channels like Telegram. Um, and we use email if we want to get in touch with the board. Yeah, I can speak for the board. We have a board mailing list, which we receive external emails to and talk to each other, sometimes not very much, sometimes an awful lot. Um, we also have a, a real-time chat channel, which is based on IRC, but there's a bridge to, um, to Slack. Uh, we have GitLab. Um, the foundation has a GitLab account. Um, which is open source, and so for issue tracking, that's actually available to other working groups. We could set up other, other places there if issue tracking is useful for the working groups, especially if there's something you are expecting from the board, you could put an issue in your, your repository and we could track that as well to make sure that we're, we're um, on task. And uh, we have a monthly meeting on Mumble, which um, you all are, are welcome to attend um, and listen in on. I'm on a few working groups, and they communicate a variety of ways. Um, they communicate a variety of ways uh, for communication between working groups. All of them use email, basically. Um, but there's GitHub tickets, there's GitLab tickets, there's um, specialized tools like OTRS, where, where some stuff ends up. Um, IRC, uh, I think that's pretty much covering everything, really. Don't you have uh, meetings on, in video conferences on the board? No, because my, my, my vision is the following. Uh, and I must say that I, I, I'm quite new to the community, and I, but it seems to me that sometimes when people communicate writing, writing, in writing, this can be very harsh. I've got a principle that I've learned about 24 year, 20 years ago with a, with a boss. He was saying, bad things you never write, and good things you can write. I mean, you go in any meeting with a colleague and just after the meeting, you write and say, hey, thank you for being with us during the meeting, but at that point, uh, your intervention was not that good and that was not that productive. That is very bad. I mean, this is perceived very badly. When you write to a colleague and say, hey, thank you very much for coming to the meeting. Your intervention was very good and helped a lot. We closed the B deal or we managed to do this thanks to you. Then you can write. So I think it's very, 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 very important when you, have a, you work on something to work speaking. And today it's easy to speak. Okay, 
No, I think it's very important to, I mean, because there, is, there, are, things, there are some things you, you cannot explain in writing, or if writing, it's, it's two pages and it's two hours, and in fact, a good shout with someone you want to shout out is, is, is on the phone, and it's fine, because normally when you are, we, are, we are all willing to do something positive in, in one direction, you shout at your brother, your brother shouts back, and, and then it's all fine. But when you write, it's, it, it's very harsh. So it's very important to speak. That's what we are doing yeah. today. today. Gregory, yeah, no, We've, I agree. They're, Go ahead. they're good points. We learned some lessons on state of the map over the years, and it's changed. Um, I think doing it with video, we found it would slow down the connections on a group thing. But the audio, mumble works very nicely. I like it because it lights up your name so you know who's speaking because I'm terrible with accents. And if, if we've got a group of people all from Germany, I think ev everyone's the same and I get mixed up who's speaking. Um, we also actually found um, the years that we've had minutes and when we've been able to use something like um, Google Docs or Chaos Pad to have someone typing the minutes as they happen has been really good for language. Um, because, I mean, I'm English, I can understand generally other people speaking English, but those that are struggling with language, they like, they can listen, and as you say, there's a lot of things you get from real-time voice. Um, but, yeah, if, you can, if you've got someone minuting in real-time, those that are struggling with the language find it easier. Um, so I would really recommend that to other groups and meetings generally. Um, but also, those meetings are good for specific things that, for state of the map, we need to discuss. Also, having things in writing so they get done is important to um, the action points. So we have, I have a hard stop at six because I have another, we have a, another board meeting thing. Um, I just wanted to take the liberty of saying one thing. I'm super thankful for every contribution. Like, for everybody who's on a working group who does, like, in the State of the Map working group, got two people here, and they're running an event. So thank you. I mean, the, the, the work that happens is really massive, and sometimes people, it's overloaded, and it's breaking people, right? I think that there's a lot of really beautiful talent, and that's amazing, and that's board members as well. But, you know, why do we get to the next level is where I kind of stand right now. And so whether it's getting better at communication, it's getting better at the tool sets, or just being able to make sure that we have new people who are trained up. Frederick's been asking for somebody to be trained up on Treasury for a while, and you know that's a flag. So we have things to do in the next few months, which is great, but we have another 10 minutes or so for questions. Please go ahead. have a question but I don't just want to say again because I, I think it's more important to, to raise your voice in a, in a communi community conference than just listen to talks and stuff because, because for me it's like my third state of the map and, and now I'm at the level to see yeah I don't want to listen to every talk I don't want to rush through the lessons I just want to also talk to the people because I never meet or I only meet them once per year if I go to other continent by airplane mostly, so uh, here there's a chance to talk and you have to plan also the sessions, like to talk more, to, to, to also get a better solution than keep it on the, yeah, I will write you maybe next, well, I will you write you next day, but there is no mail coming because you don't have really a focus on, on talking about the uh, problem. And yeah, so. That's it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, thank you. I enjoyed the discussion. Okay. Should we turn these off? Uh, I guess so. Uh, I think this was really useful. I, I, time flew, no? <laughs> that was going to be 20 minutes. So thank you all for coming. I hope we can uh, continue the uh, conversation. <laughs>